Amen. 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 God is good. How often? And all the time. While keeping your social distance, look across at somebody and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. I might as well go and do it when I woke up early this morning. My heart was beating right on time. I said, Lord, I truly thank you for opening up these eyes of mine. Then I went over to the window, and while I was peeping out the shade, once again I had to tell him, thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. Now the sun was brightly shining, and the wind was blowing not too strong. And in a treetop just a few feet away, Brother Robin was singing a song. Now, I don't know what he was singing, and pretty soon he was on his way. But who's to say he wasn't being grateful, saying, Lord, thank you for another day. Now, I know that Robin had enough sense to say thank you. We ought to have that too on this morning. Well, preacher, how can I say thank you in the middle of a pandemic? How can I say thank you in the midst of COVID-19? You are alive and well. You know you're going to from your coming from. You got your health. You got your strength. You got food on your table. They ain't cut your lights off yet. Praise God. You got an extension on that. You, you got something that you can be thankful about. No matter where we are, no matter what we are going through. We got one or two reasons that we can say, Lord, I thank you. And if you ain't got no other reason to say thank you, you thank God that he has forgiven you of your sins. Things that you used to do, you don't do them no more. God has brought you a what? Mighty a mighty long wind. He's good. He's good. It's so good to see y'all. It's so good to see y'all. So good to see you. So good to be here with you all this morning. We want to take this opportunity, not just for those of us that are here live in the sanctuary this morning, but for all of you that are watching this via live stream, whether it be Facebook, whether it be YouTube or some other media outlet, we're just thankful that you chose by to, um, on the web, stop by 7009 Wilson Boulevard this morning. And we're so glad that you tuned in. We pray that you will listen with attentive and honest ears and hearts because the word of God is powerful. I'd have you to know that. Paul, Paul said that the word of God was the power of God to save. It is also the power of God unto salvation. And if you will listen to word of God, the word of God, no matter where you are in your life at this moment, the word of God will be able to help you. If you're sad, God's word will give you comfort. If you need joy, God's word will give you everything that you need. And I believe it was King Zedekiah that came when he was uncertain about the future of his nation, about the future of his kingdom. And he called on to Jeremiah, he said, is there a word from the Lord? And I'd have you to know that even in the middle of what we're going through right now, there is a word from the Lord. And if you came to hear a word from the Lord this morning, say amen. I heard y'all. Now y'all said it too. I heard y'all when you said it. Amen. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to begin at verse number 12, and we're going to conclude at verse number 19. The grass withers, and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Luke chapter 17, verses 12 through 19. And again, let us be in prayer um, for our nation, uh, for our leaders, that they will continue to make wise decisions as we continue to travel along during the midst of this pandemic, let's be in prayer for all of our first responders, for all of our nurses and policemen and everybody that's having to be out in the middle of this. Let's just pray for everybody. How's that? Pray for everybody. Luke, Luke chapter 17, beginning at verse number 12 and concluding at verse number 19. And the word of God reads as thus. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourself unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet giving thanks unto him, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Verse number 19 again, he says, Arise and go your way, for your faith has made you whole. I want to give for a thought, for a message this morning. You need to activate your faith. You need to activate your faith. Faith is the door by which we as children of God are able to come into the knowledge of God and the knowledge of God's word. The Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God. And absolutely there is no way in the world that you can please God without having faith. You can clean up your act, you can stop smoking, you can stop drinking, stop chewing, stop running, stop whatever you're doing and become as morally good as you want to be and still be just as far from pleasing God as you were before. You mean, Brother Peterson, that I can clean my life up and get myself together and God is not impressed? No, he is not impressed. There are people who live better by accident every day than we do on purpose. There are people who don't even believe that Jesus is Lord who have more moral integrity and are more committed to their what you would call philosophy of life than many of us who say that we are children of God. So as Christians, we should be moral. We should be clean. We should try to live a sinless life and so forth. But that is not our distinction. Our distinction is that we have believed on the shed blood of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So then there is a correlation we have between the heart of a man and the mouth of a man. For heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In other words, believing God brings us to a state of righteousness. So this didn't just start in the New Testament. It started out in the Old Testament. Y'all remember Abraham, don't you? Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him as what? Righteousness. Well, I had no righteousness to bring to the table and to bring before God on my own, but he set up a clearance sale called redemption for people like you and me. And in spite of the fact that we are not right, God says, wherever you are, if you will, but come to me and lay your burdens down at my feet. God said, I give you a brand new life and I give you a brand new start. So he says, if you will believe me, and he says, if you can come with faith, I will give you righteousness in spite of the fact you are not worthy of it. So he says, I will declare you righteous if you will put your faith in me. So you cannot, church, be a born again, blood washed Christian without having faith. See, but we're, we're so engrossed in what we can see. And, and, and what we feel and what we read in the paper and, and what we heard on the news and we operate in a natural sense rather than in a spiritual sense. And God, that's why I'm glad the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth because God is looking for somebody who will stand on his word and say, Lord, I believe you. Come hell or high water, I believe you. My body's racking with pain, but Lord, I believe you. I don't know what's going on in this current crisis that we have but Lord I believe you I don't care what the doctor says Lord I believe you I don't care what he said she said they said Lord I believe you and when it's all over because I believe God I'm going to be better as a result of it somebody say I'm going to be better as a result of it Pack your bags because I'm getting out of this. He said, he said, I'm not talking about, and y'all, I'm not talking about the, the kind of faith that, that's abundant in the world that we live in today, what I call a microwave faith. You know, you know, we have a luxury here in the place that we live in this country because y'all know you get sick, you got urgent cares, you got emergency rooms, you got medical centers and all kind of stuff. But you have to go where people are in trouble to really see faith flourish. See, you don't know nothing about faith when all your bills are paid. 
and your body's feeling good, and all your kids are acting right, and your marriage is intact. You have to go through something where all hell is breaking loose in your life, and you got trouble everywhere, and even in the midst of that, you say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to fix it. I don't know when you're going to fix it, but I believe what you said in your word, that you will never put more on me than I am able to bear. If you allow me to go through this trial, if you allow me to go through this circumstance, then obviously there's something that you want me to learn in the middle of it that's going to be beneficial to me when I come out on the other side. That's why I praise God the way that I do, because I got good news for y'all today. He didn't say that weapons wouldn't be formed. He said they'll be formed, but they will not prosper. I'm so glad that I serve a God today, that even though storms arrive, storms are not built to last. And any storm that comes, just as sure as it came, it got to get up out of there and they got to go. But while the battle is raging, trust in God. While the wind is blowing, trust in God. While the rain is pouring, trust in God. How can you say that God is the captain of your life and you can't make it through a storm? Lord, 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 what's going to happen? Lord, what's going on? Children of God, you, you see, your faith is really put to the test when you go through storms in this life. Can I tell you something? That, you know, we, we love being on the mountaintop in life. Oh, we love, we love everything right, everything just peaches and cream, no problems, no worry. We love that, and, and, and we love to experience that. But can I tell you something? You won't always be on the mountain. Can I tell you something? Life will not always be good. There will be some days that are better than other days. I just had one when that can say that some days are better than other days. Sometimes I want to go. Sometimes I want to stay. Sometimes I want to go left. Sometimes I want to go right. And you know, if we were left up to ourselves, we would be pitiful. But thanks be unto God that he said, I know they're in a bad state. I know they're messed up. So you know what? I'm going to send. So I'm going to send them some help. And he sent that in his son when he died for us. So, so he says, faith, faith is important for us to have. But your faith has to be put to the test. You know, it's easy to walk around and say, I have faith. I'm a person of faith. You ain't got no problems going on in your life. No worries. Everything is just perfect. You look up the word perfect in the dictionary. Got your picture sitting right there, right there. Because your life is just perfect. Everything is going good. And we love that. And we walk around and we brag about what God is doing in our life. And how God has blessed me. And how far we have come. But man, just as soon as some trouble arrives in our life, the very person that was just saying, I will trust in the Lord until I die. And I said, Lord, where are you? Lord, Lord, what's going on? Lord, what are you going to do? We have to make our calling and our election sure. If you're going to trust in God, you ought to trust in God. Don't, don't trust in God partially. Trust in God with everything that you got. So, Lord, even when it don't make sense, I trust you. Lord, even when I can't see it, Lord, I trust you. Lord, even when I cannot even comprehend it, Lord, I trust you. Because I read somewhere where it said, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. As high as the earth is from the heavens, so are his ways above our ways. So in our text, Jesus has just left Jerusalem. Passed through Samaria. Samaria, that, that untouchable place where the Jews had no dealers. They, they didn't deal with healthy Samaritans, let alone a sick Samaritan. And, 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 and not healing sick Samaritans. He, he's not dealing with lepers, at, at least of some which were Samaritans. And nobody wanted to deal with the leper, much less a Samaritan. And lepers were commanded to announce their coming. They say unclean. If they was coming around some people, they would have to haul out a distance. Unclean, unclean. Folks started getting nervous. Mama started grabbing their kids and bringing them in because nobody wanted to be around these people that had leprosy. They moved out of the way. The lepers were not a pretty bunch of people. Because of the condition that they had, that they, they're spotted infected skin, what it would do, it would draw gnats and flies, and they would be riding around on their arms and on the other part of their bodies. Infectious diseases. Nobody would treat them. The lepers were a mess. It was not usual to see as leprosy began to take in, and they eat up the flesh and even the muscle tissue of the people. Little by little, you will see after a while, fingers start falling off their hands while they're walking. 
Nobody wanted to touch a leper for fear that in the process of touching them, leprosy might get on you. You think people today are fearing coronavirus? Leprosy. If you got close to it, if you got near it, if you made any casual contact at all, you could get infected. And they were commanded to stay in a leper's den, to live in colonies. You can't get well living in a colony. I say that for y'all online that got it just then. You can't get well living in a colony, hanging around people that are messed up just like you're messed up. If you're trying to get delivered from lying, you don't need to hang around a bunch of liars. And if you're trying to get delivered from, from drinking, you don't need to hang around people that every time you go around they're drinking. Why do people hang around in colonies of people that are messed up just like them and they can't do any better? Maybe it's because those of us who don't have problems don't associate with people that do have problems. So we have to hang around whoever we can hang around because the people that can offer me to some help think they're too good to associate with people like me. Unclean, unclean, unclean is what they have to holler out. Mothers will snatch their children and y'all, come on, we got lepers coming through. Jesus came down through Samaria. I would like to tell y'all that Jesus went to the lepers colony, but he didn't. He did not. He didn't come to the lepers colony. He was just passing through. He was not looking for the lepers. What do you do when you're losing joy, you're losing peace, you're losing strength, just got problems going on in your life, and you feel like Jesus ain't even looking in your direction? I'm not a jealous person. I'm not, I'm not jealous by nature. But you can get frustrated when it seems like here it is. Oh, God blessing everybody but me. Oh, y'all ain't never thought like that. I guess I'm talking to the wrong people. You know, God blessing everybody but me. God making a way for everybody but me. Things going right for everybody but me. I've been faithful. I've been seeking you. I've been serving you. And it looked like you're blessing all these other people. Hey, 911, can I get some help up in here, Lord? Maybe, maybe y'all maybe y'all don't pray like that, but, but when I pray, I open up to God. And, and, and I tell God everything. I say, Lord, it may not be right, but this is how I feel about it. And, and God loves when we come to him and we don't try to be cute, we don't try to be pretty with it, but you just lay it all out at the feet of Jesus because he already know about it. So what you trying to hide? We, we want to tell God the, the little piece of information that we tell everybody else. You got to realize talking to God ain't like talking to nobody else because you're talking to somebody that knew you before you knew who you was. He came down through Samaria and Jesus was passing by and the lepers didn't holler, unclean, unclean. Y'all notice that? When Jesus came by, they didn't say unclean, unclean. Oh, it, it, it's, it'll get good. See, when the emergency gets bad enough, sometimes you don't care. You just got to say, Lord, I need some help. And Lord, I need some help right now. You know, you don't have time for them King James prayers that you pray. You know, you don't have time for all that. You just say, Lord, I need you to show up. And Lord, I need you to show up right away. Have any of y'all ever had any circumstances in your life where you had just exhausted yourself and you just resolved yourself to the fact that, Lord, I need you to show up and I need you to show up right away. Lord, I have done everything that I know to do. Try every solution that I know to try. Lord, I need you to show up and make a way for me because, Lord, if you don't, I just might lose my mind up in here, up in here. So, so now that there are all types of personalities, maybe watching this video right now, some are reserved, and I respect that. Some people are not as, as animated as other people, and I can appreciate that. But all of you who are not too worried about it. You can say that you have had a time or two in your life when you've had to ask God to just have mercy on you. You, you, ain't nothing else you can say. Driving down the road, Lord, headed to a doctor's apartment, wherever it is that you were headed, you just said, Lord, I need you to help me, and I need you to help me right now. And you learn that it, it don't take all day to pray. If you just said, Lord, show up. If you just said, Lord, help me. If you just said, Lord, I need you right now. You know, sometimes that's all the prayer that you can pray. And you, any of y'all ever had to pray them water prayers? But it just rolled down your cheek. 
when you couldn't conjure up the words. You, you, you couldn't get the words to say because you were so troubled in your spirit and you were so hurt by what was going on in your life that you just had to say, Lord, have mercy on me. And sometimes you can't even cry. Sometimes you just lift your hand with it and say, if I couldn't say one word, Lord, sometimes I just, I just wave my hand. Lord, you know my trouble. Lord, you know my worry. You know my situation. Lord, take care of it for me. Take care of it, Lord. And see, and, and he the blind bought a man. Shall I remember him? He sat by the highway side begging. But when he heard Jesus was passing by, y'all remember, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. They said, man, be quiet, be quiet. Shut your mouth, shut your mouth. He said, be quiet. But that man he began to cry even the more. Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And sometimes people might try to hush you up when they don't understand really what God is doing in your life. Man, what's she crying for? She ain't going through that much. Man, what's she doing all that for? She ain't going through that much. If people only knew that it's so easy for you to put a smile on your face and walk around like everything is okay, but on the inside, they don't know that you're bruised, that you're broken, that you're hurting, that you really just want to throw your hands up and holler and cry because of what you are going through in this life. You don't understand, but God understands. And that's why you praise God the way that you do. That's why some of y'all this morning, in spite of what's going on, you said, Lord, man, I'm going to wrap my face up. I'm going to get my germ mix. I'm going to go on out of here, and I'm going to worship God. Because let me tell y'all, there's nothing like being among the people of God. And, and, and some people have experienced that in these past few weeks, not being able to come to assembly. You miss the assembly of God now. Now, well, now, sometimes we may take it for granted, and we may not care for it as we should, but you miss being around the people of God. You miss the fellowship and the breaking of bread and, and the singing. You miss all of that. Amen. So the question he asks is, in essence, where is your faith? Where is your faith? You cannot just give up because things get hard. Where is your faith? Just because the road got a little bumpy, you want to get out of the car. No. Where is your faith? Well, my marriage ain't going to never get no better. Where is your faith? My children, they just a lost cause. I can't do nothing with them. Where is your faith? Well, I can't do anything about it. Where is your faith? In God. Where is your faith? He says that if you have faith the size of a, y'all, he didn't even say a sunflower seed. He didn't even say a watermelon seed. He said, you just have faith the size of a mustard seed. Any of y'all that ever plant anything, you know a, mu a mustard seed is so small that that thing gets stuck under your fingernail while you're holding it. It's just that small. So Jesus said, if you just have a little itsy bitsy teensy wincy little bit of something on the inside of you that believes that I can make a way, that believes that I can provide, that believes that I would do it for you, it is no secret what God can do. What he done for others, God will do the same thing for us. He'll do the same thing for us. So, so he says, the interesting, the interesting thing is, is, is the sequence in the way all of this happened. Jesus didn't go up to them first. They called for Jesus. That's why, you know, some of us, we get in the mode of right here, well, I'm going to just sit back and wait on Jesus. Like God is just going to bring down everything from heaven and just sit it in your lap. Every day you go to the door and open it, God just going to have your blessings for the day sitting right there at the door. And sometimes we sit around and say, well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. You see this? These folk walking, losing thumbs, falling off because of leprosy. Losing fingers, losing other expenditures. They losing all of that, and yet and still, they were trying to get to Jesus. Evidently, Jesus, was, he, Jesus didn't even see them at first. He wasn't even looking at them until they hollered. Because the Bible says they scream, have mercy on us. And then it says, when he saw them, he said, when he saw them, he told them to go show themselves to the priest. And if y'all have ever had to be like that, just, Lord, do you see me? Lord, do you see me in my mess? Do you see me in my stupor? Do you see me in my crisis? Do you see me in my confusion? Do you see me in my pain? Lord, it's not really a pretty picture what I got going on right here. Lord, truth be told, you already know I got some ugly stuff going on in my life. But still, Lord, see me in my predicament. See me in my pain. See me in my worry. I got some funky smelling stuff going on up in here. But Lord, I need you to have mercy on me. 
when he saw them, when he saw them, they said, see me, Lord, see, see, Lord, see what has fell off while I was trying to get to you. Sick, broken down, crippled. Body is a mess, but they were still trying to get to Jesus. And sometimes, y'all, in reading the Word of God, we find instruction for our life. And in reading the Word of God, we find the path as to which God would have for us to follow. And I have some advice for you this morning. If God told you to do something, do it. If God has instructed us to do something, do it. The Scripture says that obedience is what? Better than sacrifice. But, 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 but when, God, when God wants us to do one thing, and we stand there saying, well, you know, this is the wrong time, Lord. Well, maybe I don't need to be doing this. I'm, I'm going through some trouble. I'm this and that. It's not the right week, Lord. Whenever you need, God wants you to do it, you need to do it. Don't wait because that is a trick of the devil. The devil knows when you get excited about working for God. The devil knows when you get excited about serving God. So the devil is going to provide you with any and every excuse in the book that you can use not to be faithful. Man, where you know your car got a little pollen on it, you can use Sunday morning to wash up your car. You ain't, you ain't got to go to serve. We use that as an excuse. And man, you know, Wednesday night, uh, this show coming on, that show coming on. And I don't really like, like I like to catch the live thing. I don't like to see no recording. The devil will use any trick that he can to try and trick you because he knows what you like. He knows what you desire. And at that moment that you think you're doing just as good, he will bring it and put it in your path in an effort to try and trip you up. But that's why the scripture says, let any man that thinks he stands, what? Take heed unless he fall. Because you'll find yourself Right now, i never do that again. i never get involved in that again. Five minutes later, you'll find yourself doing that very same thing that you said that you would never do or get involved in again. So this leprosy thing, he, he told that they called out to Jesus, said, Lord, have mercy on us. So, so, so they turned from him to go as he told them, go show yourself to the priest. But uh, look at the text. Look at the text. First, they were coming to him, and now they were going from him. And the scripture says that as they went, they were cleansed. They didn't get cleansed just by Jesus looking at them. They didn't get cleansed just by saying, Lord, have mercy on us. So can I tell you something? If you want to do better, there's something that you're going to have to do on your part. If you want to get better, there's something that you're going to have to do on your part. The doctor, all he can do is prescribe you a prescription. You have to take the prescription in the way that you are supposed to take it if you ever expect to get better. The Bible says that as they went, they were cleansed. Y'all, it takes faith. And faith does not know what is around the corner. Faith does not know what is behind the door, but faith knows who is behind the door. Faith knows who has already provided a way of escape for us. The Bible says that as they went, as they were walking, putting one foot in front of the other, they were getting better. They were getting cleansed. They were getting healed. And can I tell you something? God appreciates the little steps that you take. Because God sees that I got somebody that's willing to do better. I got somebody that's willing to make a change. And can I tell you something? I've learned this in my existence in life. If you take one step, he'll take two. If you go with God and if you walk with God, God will always be with you and he will walk with you. So, so, so the, as they went, as they went, they were walking. The Bible says that they were clean. They, they, they were looking. They were looking for God. Apparently, they was looking. At, I, I would have been looking like, Jesus, man, you're a healer. I've heard about everything else that you could do, man. Can you hear me now? But Jesus said, hey, I want you to go and show yourself to the priest. And look at the story. One realizing that he had got better. What was his response? It says that he turned back and he gave God thanks and he glorified God for what he has done. But the other nine, I guess they had just got content and happy with what God had given them. And they didn't see no need to come back and tell God, thank you. They didn't see no need to come back and tell God, oh, I appreciate what you've done in my life. And can I tell you, children of God, that is the proper response when God blesses you. That is the proper response when God does something in your life. You ought to give God thanks and you ought to give God praise for every blessing that he has ever poured out in your life. When you woke up this morning, 
morning, you ought to have told God, thank you. When you went to your table to eat this morning, you ought to have told God, thank you. When you got in your car and you turned the, the key in the ignition and it turned on, you ought to told God, thank you. Being able to be in his house in the middle of crisis, in the middle of confusion and chaos, you ought to tell God, thank you, because he didn't have to do it. But I don't know about you, I'm sure glad that he did. I'm sure glad that he did. Sometimes, sometimes, y'all, y'all know what it's like to feel like you working and trusting and things just ain't turning around for you. Any of y'all ever know what that's like? It seems like things just are not working in favor. But can I tell you something? Even when it don't look like it's working, God is working. Even when you can't see it. Sometimes I've learned that when you can't see it and trace it, that's when God is at work the most. So, but our job is not to be worried about what God is going to do. Our job is not to be worried about how God is going to do this, when are you going to do this. Our job is to have faith. Our job is to trust in God. Our faith is being put to the test right now. A lot of people's faith is being put to the test. And a lot of folks that said they had faith, turns out they don't really have faith. Uh, I, I, I believe it, James has said that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So can I tell you something? Wavering and faith don't mix up. It's either going to be one or it's going to be the other. You find yourself in a condition like the man that had a son that was epileptic. And he came to the disciples and he said that he's foaming at the mouth and he's gnashing his teeth and he's throwing himself into the water and I've done X, Y, and Z. The man said, I believe, but I need you to help my unbelief. How is it that you can believe and unbelieve at the same time. Because even though you believe, you might have been a member of the church for 50, 60 years. But can I tell you something? There will be some storms that will come your way in this life that you are by no means prepared for. You were not looking for. They will try your faith. They will deal you a blow. They will knock you down to your knees. And you'll be looking like, man, what happened? Like, like, what's going on? Like, who, who knocked me out? Like, I, I feel like I've been in the ring with Mike Tyson. Like, what's going on? Some situations will come at you in this life like that, but it ain't your job to even try and defeat the battle. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's what, that's what true faith is. True faith doesn't worry about a battle. True faith just trusts in God to take care of the battle. You say, Lord, you knew the battle was coming before I ever into the battle. So, Lord, if you knew that much about it, Lord, surely I know you have already provided a way for me to get out, a way for an escape. Can I tell y'all, even though we are going through some troublesome times right now in our country, in our nation, in our world, can I assure you right now, things are going to get better. But can I tell you, in the midst of these trials, in the midst of these afflictions, in the midst of our despair, hold on to God's unchanging hands. Hold on to God. Hold on. Don't let go. I know it's getting rough and I know it's getting tough, but don't give up on God. You hang on in there. Even though other people are going to leave, they're going to fall by the wayside, you stay with God. If you go with God, let me tell you, you'll reach your destination. I don't care. As long as Captain Jesus is driving this ship, you will arrive to where it is that you need to go. But you got to hang on in there. Where is your faith? You say you got a problem? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? In God. Can I tell you something? It was David who said, he provided a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And he goes on later on to say that, surely goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of my life. Can somebody just thank God for goodness and mercy that are going to follow us all the days of our life. No matter how bad things get, goodness and mercy are going to follow me. I may be downtrodden, but goodness and mercy are going to follow me. Depressed and dejected, but goodness and mercy are going to follow me. I got trouble in my mind. I got trouble in my house. I got trouble on my job, but goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days of of my life. God is with you. He's with you. And because God is for you, you need not worry about who or what is against you. I know you're fearful. I know you're frightful. You're worried right now because you're fighting an enemy that you cannot see. COVID-19 is not something that you see walking down the street. It's something that you cannot see, something that you don't even know that you're coming in contact with. But can I tell you something? Trust God to fight our battle. 
And for those things that we cannot understand, those things that we don't know, trust God. And when you trust God, let me tell you, you will be in better spirit. You will live a more peaceful life knowing that I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but I know who's waiting on me in my tomorrow. And you can trust God. Jesus told them, go show yourself to the priest. And they were still lepers. And he told them to go show themselves to the priest. Why? They ain't even going to let us in the place. Why am I going to show myself to the priest that I'm a leper? But while they were walking, the Bible says that they were healed as they went on their way. It means that if you don't go nowhere, apparently you ain't going to get nothing. But every step they took, they got a little bit better and a little bit better. No wonder the Bible says that the, the, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. Just take one step. Just a step. That's all you got to take. Step out on God's promise. Step out on God's word. Step out on your faith. But the question is, can your faith hold you up during troublesome times? Can your faith hold you up? I tell y'all, at this point in my life, I thank God that my anchor has gripped the solid rock. I got a foundation in Jesus Christ. And I know that, and can I tell y'all something? Y'all had trouble going on in your life before you ever heard about a corona or a virus. You had trouble going on in your life. You had trouble going on. You had X amount of problems going on in your life. And when this trial is over, when this battle is over, you're still going to have battles. You're still going to have problems. You're still going to have issues that you have to face in this life. But the same person that helped you in the former tense in your life is going to help you in the present tense of your life. And if you need him in the future, because you're going to need him, I can tell you that, he'll be with you then. Y'all, our Savior has told us that he would never leave us, and neither would he forsake us. God cares about us. He cares about what we're going through. And I know there are many people right now, you have questions in your mind that if God is so good, how could he allow it? If God, how? And he can do this, and he can do that. Well, I know my God has a reason for everything that he does. For everything that he does, God has a reason, and ultimately, he will get the glory out of the situation. He will get the glory out of it. So the devil thought he had won when the coronavirus shut down the church. And, and he don't know. We got virtual church now. We got church online. We got it on Facebook. We got it on Twitter. We got it live streaming. The word of God is going to get out like Malcolm X said, what? By any means necessary. We're going to get the word of God out. We're going to take it out to the highways, to the hedges. Everywhere we're going, we're going to let people know that the same God that did what he did yesterday is able to do it today. And we we'll trusting in God. Our faith is in him and we will not waver. We want you to believe God. We want you to trust in God. But can I tell you, you're going to have to have some faith. You're going to have to have some faith in God. Faith that you don't have to know what's coming in tomorrow because you know the same God that kept you yesterday and the same God that is keeping you today is able, more than able, to keep you in your tomorrow. So I want to know today, will you trust him? Will you surrender your life to him? Will you trust God for your salvation? God knew we were not worthy. He knew we were unfit. He knew we were just a bunch of misfits trying to do what we could do. But God came. He came to us, gave his life, shed in his blood, hung out on Calvary's cross for the sins of mankind. And can I tell you, the blood of Jesus is stronger than the coronavirus. Can I tell you that the blood of Jesus is stronger than any affliction and any disease that we have in this life? They sing this old song that say, I'm going to stay under the blood till the danger passes by. I remember, y'all remember when the death angel had passed through and it said, he told him, he said, I want you to go and I want you to kill a lamb. And it said, I want you to get the blood and I want you to put it on either side of the doorpost. So therefore, when the death angel come and see the blood, he'll pass over that house. And can you see now folk out trying to kill lamb? Amen. Let me get one of them lambs. You don't need all them lambs. Folk killing the lamb, putting the blood on that death post. And as the death angel came Came through that night, everybody that had the blood over their doorpost, they were saved and they were alive. But can I tell you, children, today, if you stay under the blood, if you stay on your knees in prayer, if you stay in the face of God, if you trust God without wavering, 
it's going to pass over you. It's going to pass over you. Children of God, we cover. We, we, we ain't talking about all state stands or you in good hands. We in better hands because we in the Lord's hands. It is going to take a, If God cares for the lilies of the field and the fowl of the air, how much more does he care for you? He cares. He cares so much about you that he provided a way of escape. Just as Abraham, full of faith, was willing to lay down his son's life on that mountain. And before he could take his son's life, God holler, hey, man, now I know you got faith. Now I know that you trust me. Look, over there in the bush, caught in the thicket, there is a ram. God provided a scapegoat. God provided a way of escape. And y'all know Jesus is our scapegoat. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, man, some of us be messed up around here having to pay the penalty of our sin. But because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, he paid our debt in full. So now the devil can't be calling you, harassing you, bill collector, hey, you owe me sin. No, you don't owe the devil a thing because God has washed your sins away. What can wash away our sins? Oh, the blood. The blood. Church, we've got to stay under the blood until this danger passes by. We, we don't know. We don't know this is something that we don't understand. But as I said, what we don't understand, trust God. Trust God to do it. And I promise you, he won't let you down. He'll be with you. Not some of the way, but he will be with you always. You can trust him. You can trust God today. If you are here today, maybe you're watching this be a live stream, and you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sins. You have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You have not yet come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, ain't no better time to get right than the present time. Ain't no other time promised to you other than the time that you have right now. God is concerned about you so much that he said that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Good Jesus came and he paid a debt. He gave his life and in the shedding of his blood he purchased the kingdom of God. He purchased the church, the church of Christ with his own shedded blood and now Anybody that desires to be saved, you can become a member of the body of Christ. I remember when it was on the day of Pentecost when Peter preached the first gospel sermon and he preached unto them and it said that after he had heard the words that Peter preached, that they were pricked to their heart and they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's still the same way today as it was back then. You got to hit the water in order for your sins to be washed away. I ain't talking about sweet water. I'm talking about the watery grave of baptism. If you want to have your sin washed away, it is in, in contact in the water that we do die the death. As we are lowered down in the water, we are lowered down just as our Savior was lowered down in the earth, and we rise up to walk in newness of life. What does the Bible say? That if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if you're standing in need of salvation, come Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Come here in his word. Believe in the same, repenting of your sins, confessing him as your Lord, as your master, as your guide. Confess him. Be willing to repent of your sins. Repentance is a change, a conscious change of mind that produces a change in your action. After repentance, be willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with, never to come up before you. This life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. According to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. If you're standing in the need of prayer, the Bible still says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. If you're not here in person, we pray that you would take this moment. Go ahead and comment your prayer request. Go ahead and send your prayer request in. We want to help you in your faith walk with God. If you are here today, you're subject to the invitation. We beckon, we plead. Why not? At this moment, while you have the chance, go ahead, come to Jesus now. And together we stand and sing the song of invitation. In this so sinful world, my time is running out and the devil won't quit. He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life. But
something you sustain in me. Deep down within my soul, my word is in control. And I know it won't be long till he comes and takes me home. I gotta.